It's no secret that most of America's state flags are pretty bad. More than half are what vexillologists, who are people who study flags, give the name SOB, seal on a bed sheet to. Most of these use a blue background with the state seal. This violates a number of flag rules, the most important of which is recognizability. Who can tell one of these from another when they're flying on a pole? They're even hard to distinguish from themselves. In January of 2017, the Nebraska flag flew over the state capitol for 10 days upside down before anyone even noticed. Because of this, lots of people have suggested redesigns. I've decided to use this video to suggest some of them, both my own and those of other people. My goal here isn't to necessarily redesign the flags myself, but to see all the states have good flags. So I followed these rules. One, if a state already has a good flag, and some do, I won't suggest making any changes. I'm not going to suggest change for its own sake. Two, if a flag can be made into a good one with a small change, I'm going with that. I don't want to make a big break with the history of a state's flag. Three, if there's an historical flag associated with a state that's better than the current one, I'll suggest that. Four, if there's an alternate flag that's already gaining traction in a state, I won't put a different one forward. Five, if I've seen a redesign suggestion that I really like, I'll suggest that. And six, if none of these is the case, I've come up with my own design. In some cases, there is more than one design that I've come across that I like, a one that deserves consideration along with one of my own, so I'll show that one too. The sources of all the redesigns of the others that I'll suggest are in the description. Both my redesigns and my evaluations of others have followed the famous set of principles suggested by NAVA, the North American Vexillological Association. One, keep it simple. Two, use meaningful symbolism. Three, use two or three basic colors. Four, no lettering or seals. Five, be distinctive or be related. In other words, either be unique or similar to another flag for a specific reason. As you'll see, it's principle four that's the one most often violated. I've added a few principles of my own to the list. I recommend following some of the rules of heraldry, such as not putting yellow or white on each other, and instead of putting a shield on a flag, turning the shield into a flag. In some cases, I've gone ahead and broken these rules, even in one of my own designs, if I think there's a good reason for that. So let's start with the states in alphabetical order. We start off well with Alabama's flag. This is a good one, bold, simple, recognizable. Some have suggested that it's based on the Confederate flag, but others see it as a variation of the flag of Burgundy, which was the flag used by Spain when Alabama was a Spanish colony. A flag as bold as this one deserves to stay. Our luck continues with Alaska. It's got some good symbols and stands out well among the other flags. It's popular in the state, and not only can it be drawn by a child, it was actually designed by a child, 13-year-old Benny Benson. Arizona makes the good flag list. I've seen it in use, and it's very beautiful against the sky. It's instantly recognizable, and the bold sun rays are striking. Here our streak ends. Arkansas commits the cardinal sin of including writing. Even worse, it's the name of the state. If you have to write the name of your state on its flag, you've failed in making your flag distinctive. Fortunately, the fix is easy, so easy that I'm far from the first to have suggested it. All you have to do is remove the state's name and rearrange the stars. And there you go. Easy. We get our luck back with California. It breaks the no words rule, but the words have so much history behind them that it would be a tragedy to remove them. Even with them, the flag is so distinctive that it's easily recognizable, not only from a distance, but even when it's limp on a staff. It's also beloved even by people who aren't from the state. I recently saw one on a sweatshirt worn by a teenager in New Hampshire. Colorado's flag is unique in having the state's initial on it, but still works. Put it in the good flag column. With Connecticut, we reach the first SOB. Okay, so it's not technically an SOB since the seal is on an oval and here we have a shield, but it's the same design. The fix here is easy. Follow the rules of heraldry and instead of putting the shield on a flag, turn it into one. Ben Carnell has another suggestion. One of the symbols of Connecticut that nutmeggers have so great an affection toward that it was put on their state quarter is the Charter Oak. This comes from an incident in 1688 when a newly appointed royal governor was confiscating New England's colony charters as a symbolic act of superseding them. When he got to Connecticut, however, the charter was hidden in a cavity in an oak tree. The Charter Oak thereby became a symbol of opposition to royal rule. Based on this, Carnell suggested this design. I'm not fond of it, but he had a great basic idea. Based on it, I'd like to suggest this alternative. 
and the SOB run continues with Delaware, it might be interesting to take elements from the seal and turn it into a flag with a blue river across the top, a green mound in the base, and a cow in the middle. But Paul Tibbetts has an even better idea. The cross is from the coat of arms of the Delaware family. The rooster is a state bird, and the shape recalls the origins of Delaware as part of a new Sweden. I do think the rooster is a bit much and might give rise to jokes about the cock on the flag. I do think there needs to be something in that part of the flag, though. Fortunately, there's a pretty obvious replacement for it. Delaware is justly proud of having been the first flag state to ratify the Constitution, and here it gets what can be seen as the first star in the U.S. flag in honor of that. Ah, Florida. Exactly like the flag of Alabama, so they had to put their seal on it to be able to tell them apart. This is a clear sign of a flag fail. What I've done is put the flag of Burgundy back into its original shape, but colored it orange to reflect Florida's nickname of the Sunshine State, as well as its most famous agricultural product. Poor Georgia. In an attempt to remove the Confederate flag in this version, in 2001 it came up with this one. Justly voted the worst state flag by NABA. Look at the thing. It's a flag with five flags on it. It was replaced by this. Now this isn't that good a flag either, but it's an improvement. I'd design a replacement for it, but George has already been through enough flag-related trauma, so let's just let them keep this one for a while. Some object to the British flag in the Canton, but I think this is an awesome flag, and Hawaiians appear to agree with me. It's a keeper. Unfortunately, Idaho's isn't. It's an SOB with a very complicated S. A blogger whose name I was unable to find, the URL is in the notes, and if it's your flag, please let me know so I can credit you here, designed this one based on the stag, on the state seal, and the garnet, one of the main products of the gem state. It runs too closely up against the no color on color rule though, so I've designed this one with the same symbolism. Illinois' flag is a tragedy. In a state which has one of the best city flags around, that of Chicago, they have this. It's a generic American flag. It could be used for any of the states, or even for the U.S. itself, with only a few modifications. Maybe that's why they felt they had to put the state's name on it. This flag was designed for their centennial. It's a pretty good flag, a bit busy with the stars though. It could be simplified in one of these ways, but since it would be more specific to the state in its original form, let's stick with that. Indiana's flag isn't too bad. I and a lot of other people have noticed that if you just remove the name, you have a pretty good one. There's an even better choice though. This flag is a George Rogers Clark flag. It has some history behind it, which is better looked up on Wikipedia than related here, but it's been flown by Indiana National Guard units in both Iraq and Afghanistan. It violates the color and color rule, but makes up for that in panache, history, and some limited acceptance already. Ah, Iowa. Remove the name and it might as well be the flag of Illinois. Ben Carno su suggested this one, basing on Iowa's having been French territory and also being the Hawkeye state. It resembles the current flag, which is a plus in getting a new flag approved. However, there's no French influence in current day Iowa, so instead I designed this. The hawk is still there, but the background has been replaced by brown for the soil, yellow for its main agricultural product, and unofficial symbol corn, all under the wide sky. I'm very fond of this design. Seriously, Kansas, how big does the name of your state need to be to be able to tell your flag apart from other SOBs? The sad thing here is that Kansas, for some reason, had an official state banner, which was also the flag from 1925 to 1927. Here's the banner. How much better is that? Like this version here, turn it so it's a flag rather than a banner, remove the Kansas on the original one, and you've got something that's simple, bold, easily recognizable, a great flag. Ah yes, a city dweller and a pioneer sharing an intimate moment. Is that what you think of when you think of Kentucky? No, you think of horses, which inspired Philip Tibbetts to design this. The blue border was added by Ben Carnell, who, as you may have noticed by now, is one of my favorite flag designers, in order for it not to look so much like, as he put it, a banner of Rohan. I say replace all the green with blue, since Kentucky is the bluegrass state. Some people have suggested complete redesigns for the Louisiana flag, often including French symbolism, but this is one of the state flags that I think would be a good one with a small change. The pelican in her piety, sacrificially feeding her hatchlings with her own blood, is a beautiful and meaningful symbol. So just remove the lettering, center the pelican, and you're good to go. Maine made a big mistake in 1909. They changed their flag to an SOB from this. The older flag is a great one for the pine tree state. Please, Maine, change it back. 
Maryland's flag is complicated, but perfect. It's the only state flag based on an English heraldic device, the Lord's arms of Lord Baltimore. Don't ever change, Maryland. You got it just right. I used to live in Massachusetts, and the flag is everywhere. But that's only because state offices are everywhere. No one else flies it. Some of the Wampanoags in the state have complained because it shows a sword threatening an Indian. The fix is easy. First, the arm with the sword is a crest and has no business on a flag. Second, by the customs of heraldry, instead of putting a shield on a flag, you turn the shield into a flag, like Maryland did. If we do that with the Massachusetts flag, we get this. A minimal change and the flag is greatly improved. With Michigan, we're still in SOB territory. It's kind of cool that their seal has an elk and a moose for supporters, but supporters don't belong on a flag in the first place. Besides, many Michiganites already know the flag isn't any good, so a number of them have been pushing this flag. This is a Zervik flag, having been designed by Christopher Zervik. The five stripes stand for the five Great Lakes, Michigan being the Great Lakes state. The green stands for Michigan's verdant land, and the two stars are for the two peninsulas which make up the state. Good job, Mr. Verdict. Michiganites, get behind this flag and make your legislature make the change. Good Lord, look at Minnesota's flag. Fortunately, our better flag was designed 30 years ago, the North Star flag. The official description is that the star recalls the state motto chosen by the pioneers, the Toile du Nord, the North Star. The blue stripe represents our lakes and rivers. The white stripe represents winter. The green stripe represents our farmland and forests. Gold represents our state's natural wealth. The waves represent the state name, Minnesota, a Native American name which means sky-tinted water. It's nice that the flag includes both the European's motto and the Indian name. Supporters of this flag don't give up. Here in Mississippi's flag, we have more Confederate symbolism. It clearly needs replacement. There's a movement to adopt a flag designed by Lawrence Stennis and thus called the Stennis flag. The movement seems to be spreading and I hope it continues to do so. It would be great to see a new flag adopted because of a grassroots movement. That Missouri's SLB contains some symbols that could be used in a new flag hasn't escaped flag redesigners. These are the crescent and the bear. Combined with the idea of representing the Missouri River, a number of good designs have emerged. My favorite is this one, designed by Big Red 618 on the sports logos forum. If I knew their actual name, I'd give it. If someone knows, let me know and I'll put it in the description. Again with the seal on a blue bedsheet, with the name of its state as an admission that no one can tell what state it's from. Montana's nickname is Big Sky Country, which led to this design by Dave Simon. I like it a lot. It's bold and beautiful, and the skull with the star could become a state logo. I would have no problem with seeing it adopted, but I do have my own design. I decided to go all the way with the nickname and just have a sky blue flag. I'd be happy with either. In 2001, NAVA named Nebraska as the second worst state flag, and now that Georgia has been changed, it's probably gained the last slot. Steve Lovelace designed this to replace it, which I think is the most beautiful redesigned flag I've ever seen. Nebraska should adopt it immediately. You know, Nevada's flag really isn't that bad. Remove the words. What's the obsession with American states putting their names on their flags? Maybe increase the size of the stars and branches, and it wouldn't be too bad. Just for fun, though, I decided to come up with a design based on the earliest Nevada flag, a truly hideous one that nonetheless has some promise. What I came up with was this. In heraldry, silver can be represented by white and gold by yellow. Stars appear in a lot of state flags to represent the star that's theirs on the national flag. Full disclosure, I'm from New Hampshire. I think that the seal is beautiful with the sun rising over the ship being built, but it just doesn't belong in a flag. Years ago, when I was in high school, there was a contest to redesign the state flag, although not a serious one, and I made my own design. I recently modified it slightly, and I think it's the best of my own designs. Even though the old man in the mountain collapsed in 2003, it's still a beloved symbol of the state. I made it in white because the section of the Appalachians in New Hampshire is known as the White Mountains. The blue on the left is there for two reasons. First, it continues the blue in the current flag. More important, it represents the color of the sky when the stars are first coming out. Those stars in the hoist are there because New Hampshire was the ninth state to approve the Constitution, which made it official. We therefore have the country emerging from the night sky as a new constellation because of New Hampshire's action. As a second reason, the current flag also has the nine stars on it. 
I think that it would look best in the unusual proportions of 1 to 2, but the more standard ones of 3 to 5 or 2 to 3 would be okay. I'm very proud of this design. Is anyone else amused by the Godfather's horse's head being suggested by New Jersey's flag? No matter what, we've got another SOB here. Like some other flags, a shield should have just been turned into a flag rather than being put on one, giving us this. Nava justly rated New Mexico's flag as the best in the U.S. No change needed. New York has an SOB. To replace it is hard. Almost everything that's an obvious symbol of the state turns out to be an obvious symbol of, the, of New York City. It occurred to me that the most uniting thing about New York is the Erie Canal, which stretches right across it, and if combined with the Hudson River, goes from Tonawanda to New York City. I wanted a thin stripe across the middle with small stripes on either side. I just couldn't think of what colors to use. Then I discovered that Jack Expo had been there before me in 2011 and had solved the color problem. The orange, white, and blue come from the flag of the Dutch, who originally settled the state. True, they are the primary colors of the city's flag, but they are also those of the Albany flag, making them not solely symbolic of New York City. This is a beautiful flag that not only improves the current one, but succeeds in the difficult job of representing the whole state. Get at it, New Yorkers. North Carolina's flag is a problem. It not only looks too much like that of Texas, but has two dates and two initials on it. Not good. Unfortunately, redesigning it is a problem, too. My own design takes the colors of the current flag and adds a cornucopia from the state seal. I'm not too happy with this design, however. I think that Hans L.N. from the Vexillology Wiki came up with a great one. The two cross cornucopia form a great design that could also serve as a logo for the state. I recommend his over mine. On to North Dakota, where the only thing specific to the state is its name written across it. It looks more like a U.S. flag than a state one. There have been a number of suggestions for flags based on the state's coat of arms. These arms are very symbolic. The green and gold symbolize agriculture, the three stars are three branches of government, and the three flags under which North Dakota has been ruled, as well as appearing in the arms of both Meriwether Lewis and the head of the first settlement. The fleur-de-lis stands for the fact that the first European to enter the state was French. The fact that an arrowhead is used for a shield refers to North Dakota being the Sioux state. Ben Carnell has suggested simply turning the arms into a flag. He laments the flag, fact that the new flag has to lose the arrowhead, but I don't see why it has to be lost. I therefore suggest this one. Truth be told, I'm not a big fan of the flag of Ohio. It looks too much to me like a pennant at a state fair. But Ohioans seem to like it, and there's a certain appeal to a non-rectangular flag, so let's just keep it. Oklahoma's flag has an easy fix, and I'm far from the first suggested. Just remove the state's name, enlarge the shield slightly, center it, and you end up with a good flag. Oregon has an interesting flag. It's the only state flag with a different front and back. I said interesting. I didn't say good. There was a statewide contest in late 2008, early 2009, to redesign it, and the winner was this. Unfortunately, no one in the legislature was interested, and it died. My own suggestion is based on the fact that the Oregonians are proud of the Oregon Trail, the actual trail, not the game. I combine this with the representation of the geography of the state, green on its western side, and then over the mountains, agricultural. Come on, Pennsylvania. This is a particularly ugly SOB. It's especially sad when you figure that they have a great symbol they could use. Pennsylvania is known as the Keystone State, and the Keystone is a simple and bold symbol that could easily be used. I'm not the first person to think of this, of course, as you can see from the link in the description. I've decided to go for the whole shebang and use the Keystone as the defining characteristic of a flag. I have a personal conflict when it comes to the Rhode Island flag. It's the only square flag, and that's pretty cool, and is otherwise unique. It breaks the no metal on metal rule, but that's not the problem. The problem is, my granddaughter was named after the hope on the flag, my son-in-law being a proud Rhode Islander. There shouldn't be any words on a flag, of course, and since the anchor is a symbol of hope, the word is redundant. Still, I can't bring it into my heart to remove the word, so I'll leave it to others to do so. South Carolina's flag is one of the good ones. Simple, easy to tell at a distance, and popular among South Carolinians. No need to change it. South Dakota is a difficult one. The current flag has to go, and SOB with its name on it twice. I have links to new designs in the description, but there aren't any that jump out at me. 
The best solution of the ones I've seen is to go back to an earlier one with just the sun, based on its nickname shared with Florida of the Sunshine State. This suggestion is obvious enough to have been made by a number of people. Jason Sabor suggests adding an arrowhead to the sun. I'd be happy with any of these designs, but just for giggles, I thought I'd come up with my own design. I thought I'd take the plowed field from the seal and put it in the base. With that as a base, the sun wouldn't have looked good in the middle of it, so I put it in the canton. Tennessee's flag is just fine. I particularly like the blue and white stripes in the fly. They're certainly unique. Don't mess with Texas. Here's the mess that's Utah's flag, an SOB with two dates, a symbol, and a word that means the same thing, two flags on a flag, and for good measure, the name of the state in small letters. Oi. The obvious solution is to do something with the beehive. Reddit users Cold Triangle and Mez Bonajikul, if that, I'm pronouncing that right, independently came up with slight variations on the same design. Here's Code Triangle's version. The beehive is a symbol of industry, which is an important idea to the Utahns and is the center of their seal. It should be the main charge on their flag as well. I think there's a flaw in the redesign, as good as it is, and that is that there's too much blue. If this flag were hanging limp on a pole, it would look just blue. I suggest adding white to the design to symbolize the Great Salt Lake. Doing that, I came up with these two designs. I like the one with the beehive shifted toward the hoist best, but either would be do for me. Replacing Vermont's SOB is easy. Simply adopt the flag of the Green Mountain Boys, which served as the flag of the Vermont Republic, which lasted from 1777 to 1791. It's currently used as the flag of the Vermont National Guard, who, like that of Indiana, knows what it's doing. Virginia's flag is an SOB, but the seal is so badass, a half-topless woman who's just killed a king, that I'd like to keep it. After all, if it's the only SOB left, it'll be unique enough to be recognized. I'd modify it slightly by removing the wreath and words, but otherwise leave it alone. Washington is frustrating. The obvious solution would be to use the arms of George Washington. Unfortunately, Washington, D.C. has already done that. Most redesigns have used them in modified form, usually in the colors of green and yellow, which I think is the best solution. A Chaley's is my favorite of the ones I've seen. I'm a bit biased here, though. You might have noticed from some of my designs that I like stripes in the base, complemented by a symbol in the canton. West Virginia was a toughie. I couldn't find any I liked online, and the first of my designs frankly sucked. I won't impose it on you. Then I thought of the principle that it's nice for flags of related areas to be related themselves. West Virginia, of course, split off from Virginia. This led me to design this. The spears reflect the one held by the woman on the Virginia flag and the liberty cap, her helmet. The flag represents the geography of the state, its roots of coal with the differing sizes of spearheads standing in for its mountains. The spears also stand for West Virginia's birth in war, but the central one supporting the liberty cap representing the new states fighting on the side of the anti-slavery forces. And now we're back to SOBs with a date, and of course, the state's name. I read a fair amount online from Wisconsiners on what they'd like to see reflected on their flag. They mentioned their state animal, the badger, the state's motto, forward, and of course, cheese. No one could think of a way to include cheese without looking tacky. I think I've come up with a great flag that combines all three of these in a simple design. The overall design is a stylization of the markings on the head of a badger. The triangle does double duty. It conveys the motto forward and can also be seen as a wedge of cheese. We end up with a clean design, which, because of its colors, can even be reproduced in black and white. The fix for Wyoming's flag is so simple that many people have thought of it. Just remove the seal from the buffalo, and that's that. So those are my suggestions for state flags. As I said at the beginning, my intent was to suggest better flags for the states. So although I came up with my own designs for some of them, I didn't hesitate to suggest those of others when I thought they were good. In any case, many of the state flags are so bad that almost any change would be for the better. I only hope that citizens of those states will become interested in change. Get on it, guys.